Thank you. Colleagues, distinguished guests, parents, friends, and most importantly, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Class of 2012, thank you for having me here today. From our first commencement exercises held in 1883 to today, 129 years later, this is a moment of enormous joy, of great accomplishment, and a possibility for our graduates, for your families, and for this institution. Being awarded a college degree, particularly from the University of Connecticut, one of the finest research universities in America, is a profound achievement and a fulfillment of the dreams of generations long past. And yet, the fact that your undergraduate experience is coming to a close probably also feels bittersweet. As you think about what comes next in your lives, I would imagine that you can't help but think about the years spent here at UConn that led you here today. But it's about your future and our future that I wanted to speak about. I have yet to see, uh, with the exception of Professor Donahue, a commencement speaker impart any earth-shattering advice. I don't have any secret of, of life to unveil for you. And um, unlike most commencement speakers, I will be gloriously brief. But I can share a few useful things for you to reflect on from time to time, in whatever path you choose and whatever life you lead. The first is this. Do everything you can do to gain perspective. The deeper and more expansive, the better. One of the greatest skills that you can have in life is being able to live and work successfully with other people. But in order to do that, you really need to understand them first. Uh, apologies to the psychologists behind me here at Gample. Um, forgive me, but my advice to you graduates is to think of yourselves as amateur psychologists in your interactions with others. Analyze the people around you. What motivates them? What are they afraid of? What makes them happy or angry? Where did they come from and what's their background? What's their culture? What's happened in their lives that's made them who they are? Why do they think and feel the way they do? This is especially meaningful when you encounter someone who is nothing like you at all. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes, taking a look at the world, even at yourself through their eyes is invaluable. Not only because it will help you to interact with them, but because they will see that you want to gain a greater understanding of them and who they are. This can be put to good use in countless ways with your colleagues at work, with your friends, your neighbors, your fellow students, and yes, even your spouses and occasional in-laws, sometimes especially them. Cities, states, and nations rise and fall on the quality and the energy of their citizens. Whether your next step is the workforce, public service, or graduate education, I ask that you carry that understanding with you wherever you go and in whatever you do. I don't believe it's naive to think that you have a responsibility to yourselves, your families, your communities, and your nation. Good people being engaged in the problems and issues we face as a society can make the difference between a healthy nation and one that is ailing. As you no doubt have already learned, no life is without challenges, difficulties, trying times. To encounter those things makes us human. We're told that dealing with obstacles in life makes us stronger and better people at the end, and, and that's true, but incomplete. So here's a word that I'd like you to think about too, maybe not today, but tomorrow, is transcendence. When you encounter difficult people, situations and circumstances in your professional lives, in your personal lives, simply working through them or just living with them isn't enough. This is because we want our lives to be defined by our successes, our achievements, and ultimately our own sense of happiness. But in order to do that, the problems you encounter in whatever form they take must be transcended. This means not simply struggling through tough times, but coming to understand, overcome, learn from, and in the end, leave your difficulties behind. It's not really about forgetting them or ignoring them. We sometimes learn the most from the things that trouble us the most. But people who cannot relinquish the past or move forward from the adversities they face can become tangled in emotions 
like anger, bitterness, resentment. And those feelings are toxic to the human heart, to the mind, and certainly to the nation. If you feel too much of them too often, they become unwanted anchors in your lives, holding you back, seemingly unable to move from beyond your own difficulties. Just never forget, and this is something that I tell students all the time, you have to be the architect of your own lives, and you're responsible for transcending the problems you face. It's the moment when you say to yourself, this is not all there is for me. I'll define my own life and not allow others to define it for me. Realizing this and acting on it, when need be, will allow you to, to eclipse your own fears, your frustrations, and make you a happier, healthier, and more fulfilled person in the end. Maybe you feel a little old today after you've been through so much here at UConn, uh, but of course you aren't. You're, uh, you have long lives awaiting you um, with much to look forward to. Many years from now, when this is a very distant event, I hope you can look back on the brief, precious time you spent here at UConn as among the best and most rewarding years of your life. And don't forget that no matter how old you are or wherever you live, you'll always be Huskies. So wishing you great success, true fulfillment, and clear skies, please accept my most heartfelt congratulations to you, the class of 2012.